I have been filming this video series on getting this old tiller running with this five horse Briggs and Stratton engine on it. If you guys are following the series, I am so sorry. We ran into a little bit of a setback here. This thing did have spark. I showed you that on another video, how we did the points and everything to get spark on it. Now it doesn't have spark anymore. I think after testing it so many times, I think I have actually blown the condenser out in this now. No matter what I do, no more spark. I'm done with the breaker points in this thing. Today, I am gonna show you what I've been doing for years. I am going to upgrade this engine to an electronic ignition system so we never need to worry about those breaker points and condenser ever again. This is a super easy. Good day, everybody. Thanks for coming back to Steve Small Engine Saloon again. I got to do it. You know I'm going to do it. There's my website address right there, stevesmallengesaloon.com. Check it out when you get a chance. So yeah, I am done with the breaker point system on this. I've been doing this for years. This is so easy to do. You don't need to take your clutch off. You don't need to take your flywheel off. Uh, you obviously got to take the starter off so we can see what we got in here. Now, you're going to see two uh, black wires coming out from behind the flywheel right there. Take a pair of side cutters and just cut them off. Just like that. Now what we did right there is we just disconnected the breaker point system underneath your flywheel. Don't worry about it. You don't have to take them out. You just leave them in there and just forget they're even there. So I know that some of you are gonna say, hey, well, you just cut off the little wire that uh, goes to your kill switch. Don't worry about it because uh, that wire is gonna be too short anyways. You have to use the wire that comes with the electronic ignition module. See how it's way longer? That's what you need. Just cut those two wires off and forget about it. Now we can take that old coil off of there. Two screws and we get that off. And here's one thing we got to do though, is once you get that uh, coil off of there, you have to take that little uh, air diverter and it just comes right off because we're going to reuse that little thing right there on the new coil. Uh, and also, that's a brand new spark plug and keeping that. That old coil right there, you can toss it, whatever you want to do. Gone. Now, this is an electronic ignition module that I have taken off of another engine that was similar to this. But that engine has no points in it. This is absolutely electronic. R points are not required. Now, before we move on any further than this, there are two important things that you need to know about uh, the coil if you take it off of another used piece of equipment like I just did right there. Before you try to make that work, uh, you, you have to make sure that the radius, the radius of the flywheel is the same as the radius of the arc on that, uh, on that coil right there. Easy way to check, you just take that and just put it against the flywheel like that. And you know instantly whether that's correct or not. The other thing you need to know is the bolt pattern, the, the distance between those two bolts where the pegs are right there, uh, whether they're the right distance apart and whether they're the right height. It's pretty easy to do. I mean, you just put that on there and you're gonna know right away if those bolt pattern works and if the radius is proper on there. If either one of those doesn't match your unit, then it's not going to work. Many things you gotta know here, keep up with me. First of all, what we're gonna do is a little bit of sandpaper. I am going to uh, sand off the uh, rust on the flywheel. And also on that new uh, ignition module, the little legs down here that uh, get really close to the flywheel, we want to take that sandpaper, emery cloth, whatever you're using. You can use a wire wheel to do this too. 
just to get the rust off. Clean the rust off the bottom of those pegs, those uh, legs, some people call them. I am not doing that because it's gonna give it better spark. I'm doing that so we can get the gap between this ignition module and the flywheel accurately. That's the only reason I'm doing that. While you got that sandpaper in your hand, I want you to take the, uh, the, the sandpaper and polish the two pegs. Those are the two pegs right there where your coil attaches to. You wanna sand those down, polish them up, clean them up, because that is where the ignition coil gets the ground from. If those are really corroded, where your coil goes on, um, it might not make contact in there and it might not work either. Also, on the coil itself, right where it hits those pegs, you want to just polish those up a little bit too. Just make sure there's no big chunks of rust or something on there. Both sides. Now we're ready to put that back on. Uh, believe it or not, you can put this thing on backwards. There are a lot of these things that actually say right on the side. It'll either say cylinder side or it'll say this side out, something like that. Some of these do not say anything on the, on the actual ignition module itself. If you want to know if you're putting it on backwards or not, because if you put it on backwards, <laughs> no worky. See this little spade tab right here? That's where your kill switch wire is gonna connect on right there. General rule of thumb, if you put it on backwards like that, you're gonna see that little tab. You should not be able to see that tab. That tab should always be hidden in between the coil and the cylinder. When it's on like that, now you know it's on right. Also on this particular unit right here, uh, this little air diverter has to go back on the new coil and uh, you can't put it on backwards because it just won't fit. Once you put that uh, air diverter on there like that, you can't physically put it on backwards because it'll hit. So now we know we got it right. And I think we got everything covered in there. Let's put it on. Now, this is how I do this. I lift that, uh, before the screws are tight, I lift the, the coil up so there's a huge gap in between the uh, coil and the flywheel. And I just snug those screws up just so they get held there, just so the ignition module won't come down. And then I rotate the flywheel. Again, this is just how I do this. There might be other ways, but this is easy for me. Rotate the flywheel so the magnet right here is directly underneath of your coil, but with a, there's a big, huge gap there. Now, Briggs and Stratton says the gap between the coil and the flywheel on this is supposed to be 10 thousandths of an inch. Guess what? A standard Steve Small Engine Saloon business card, I just vertier calibered it, is exactly 10 thousandths of an inch. I'm just kidding. all business cards that are that kind of cardboard right there. Standard business cards are ten thousandths of an inch. I put the business card in there and then just loosen those screws back off again. And you'll feel that magnet. Boom, it just sucked it down. It, the magnet just pulled that coil down against the business card, against the magnet. So you know it's down there. The business card is holding it 10 thousandths of an inch away from that uh, flywheel. Now just tighten that, tighten those screws back up. And again, these are small screws. Don't over tighten these. If you break one of these off, oh, good Lord, don't break one of these. Just nice and snug. And once they're snug like that, rotate your flywheel and that business card will slide right out like that. Done. Now you have a 10 thousandths of an inch gap in between your coil and your flywheel. Spark plug back in and ground it out properly. 
I'm going to do this with my drill again, just so we can really clearly see it. Right there, hold that spark plug down, check it out. <laughs> I love it. I'm barely even turning that thing over. That is sweet. That is awesome. Well, I hope you thought this was a little bit informative at least. Maybe a thumbs up button would, might be in order too. Uh, share this with your friends, subscribe to my channel. Put your comments down guys, put your comments down because I know that there's some of you out there that have other ways of getting around the breaker points, little electronic ignition modules and stuff that I'm not using here. Get your comments down in the comment section. Tell us all what you think. And uh, I think that's uh, it for now. Hey, you want to watch something else now? Click on that video right there next. And I think you'll like that one too. Till the next one, we're going to move on with the series. Carburetor, coming up. Steve out.